The couch is intended for entertainment purposes only. The subjects, anecdotal scenarios, and materials contained herein are by no means intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. Always seek the advice of your physician or a qualified health professional for any questions you may have about your health. Never disregard professional, medical, or health care advice because of something you heard on this show. Playboy Plus does not recommend or endorse any specific medical, professional procedure, product, opinion, or alternative health care method. If you think you are having a medical or psychiatric emergency, call 911 immediately. Young. Young. I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to try this. And maybe you'd want to try it with me. Sexy. So think about this. Are you wanting to open your relationship or are you wanting to open your legs? Legs, legs, legs? Provocative. Everybody thinking, fuck, everybody loves this. So let's all just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. We're the professionals that are here to help you tackle your bedroom dilemmas. The, the Couch. Playboyradio.com. Playboy Radio, playboyradio.com. Thank you so much for joining us here on the couch. I'm Dr. Sam, as always, joined by Dr. Kat and Jessica J. Ladies, how's it going? Good. Good. This is the place where you hear some of the hottest young sex experts give you some advice on your bedroom dilemmas. We got a good show lined up for you today. Before we get into all that, you can hit us up right now if you want to be a part of the show. 855 Playboy, 855 Playboy. Dr. Kat, what's the Twitter and Instagram and all of our social media stuff? <laughs> At Playboy. Playboy the couch at Playboy the couch hit us up if you want to be a part of the show also if you want to join in and be a guest on the show just drop us a line on direct message on Twitter at Playboy the couch Jessica J how's it going it's going good Sam Uh, in fact something happened this weekend I thought about you in the shower in like the most PG way ever uh Um, I I, I, I want some x-rated thoughts up in there one of these days (laughs) well okay so for those of you who don't know Sam has an interesting ex-girlfriend story and for some reason I started thinking about it um, when you're in the shower shower. I don't know I think about the weirdest things in the shower but yes it was very PG and I thought about the fact that you know, after you and your ex had split, she went on to have some changes in her life well, that, yeah, yeah you're well, obviously going to tell us about she, right here. You know, it was a pretty bitter breakup and mm-hmm. all that stuff. We'll get all into the details. She ended up leaving me for one of my buddies from seventh grade. She was cheating on me and all that Boo. stuff. Boo. Lame. Boo. Yeah, Lame. No, it's all in the past. I'm not caring about that as much right now. The thing is, though, I just saw the first picture of her that I have seen since the breakup. And this is something that kind of hit me. I, was, I couldn't recognize her for about 20 seconds. And then I realized, oh, my God, that's her. She put on 50 pounds. And that's what I was thinking about. The, the, I call it the drive-by. When, like, you see an ex after a while and you <laughs> see that they're not doing so great and you're driving by in, like, a hot car. So, like, you in your hot body, that's your hot car. Yeah. And she's... Well, you know, since the breakup, I lost, like, 25 pounds. I, you know, it, it wasn't so much me exercising, just not eating whatever she cooked me for that. Yeah. God. yeah. And so I, I was able to lose weight pretty naturally. And uh-huh. it, I noticed that I think she l- gained whatever I lost <laughs> times two. Apparently, and he's not exaggerating. I'm not, I yeah. remember seeing the picture. Yeah. That's yeah. what made me think about it. She... I mean, apparently, karma weighs 50 pounds. Apparently. So I... At initially, at first, I had the same reaction, the gut instinct reaction, like, yeah, I win. <laughs> yeah. But then immediately afterwards, I started feeling this weird sense of guilt, like, why am I celebrating her misfortune right now? I know she mm, screwed me yeah. over. I know she uh. did something that, you know, she broke my heart. She did everything possible that you could do wrong in ending a relationship. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I have the right to feel bad or feel happy normal. and celebrate in it. But at the same time, I feel kind of bad about it because yeah. I, I know that she had some body image issues and she had never been that. She'd never been big at all with me. She was always mm. tiny. That was part of the running joke. She was a small person with us. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, she always called herself fun sized. Oh, yeah. so, now she's like Costco size. Yeah. Now she's, you know, <laughs> industrial <size>. strength. <laughs> and, industrial strength. And she's, you know, I, I, I feel kind of bad about feeling good about it. Well, especially if she's somebody you, f- you cared for so mm. much. Yeah. Well, no, I had a lot of love for her. I, I I wanted to marry her. Just fell things, things fell apart. Had a lot of love for yeah, her. Yeah, had. Well, Dr. Cat, what do you say about him fe- feeling really great but feeling guilty? That's a lot of self awareness, as far as I'm concerned, Sam. And oh, Sam you. is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. You're like the sweetest 
this ever. <laughs> oh, Me and Dr. Cat make fun of him because he's always like, every time he talks to us about a person, he's always like, they are the greatest person. We're like, no, Nice Sam. guy. He's always like, <laughs> you said that already. He's such a nice guy. He's yeah. so nice. They're just so great. We're like, Sam, you said that already. Yeah, well, I'm surrounded by wonderful people in my oh. life. It's just this one person has trespassed and now she's yeah. not on the happy list. Good. The uh, Also, the guy that she's with. The thing is, they're actually getting married in about a month or so. So no. now she's trying to make reason for why she left you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, Redeem that's the thing. Herself. She's trying to save face. Oh, yeah. You know, she in front has of a lot yeah. of people. Absolutely. So now this is the thing. Knowing how she kind of ticks mentally and the weight that she put on. I know for a fact, like part of the best part of our relationship when we were together mm -hmm. was the sex. We had an outstanding sexual relationship. It's just I know that how she had those body image issues. And now I get the feeling she's picturing herself in that setting and she just doesn't feel as sexy as she used to be anymore which is good because she's not boning the guy that she cheated you on mean me with you're anymore. hoping you don't know well, that I, well we don't know it could be something where she feels so <sighs> secure in the relationship that she can just eat what she wants and gain all the weight without being yeah, judged that might maybe be. You never but know. typically you know whenever we see that level of weight gain mm -hmm. you know that's as therapists lot. yeah that's a lot that's right. significant yeah when we see that level of weight gain we immediately start thinking is there a depression aspect behind this well and yeah and uh stress plays such a big role in maintaining that weight yeah. how much it affects your ability to um metabolize and absorb and uh, digestive issues and everything like that. Oh, yeah. Which is what we're going to get into today, actually. Yeah. See, so... That, that's like a, a very silky smooth segue <laughs> into silky our guest smooth. right now. Because we're actually, <laughs> you know, we usually typically have just an anonymous guest with us who talks about their sex relationship problems with us on the show. But tonight, we actually have an expert joining us. Woo! Yay! We a very have sexy a, expert. A very sexy expert. <laughs> a sexpert. Yes. <laughs> now, this is an expert that teaches us about the connection between nutrition and sexuality. The, you know, being able to eat healthy and have a good, healthy lifestyle and the connection it has to sex drive, uh, to uh, the way that you view yourself within the sex act as well. So let's not waste any time. Diane, Dr. Diane, is that right? Diane Kaiser? Soon Kaysen? to be, Sam. Soon, Soon to be. be. Oh, we're jumping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Okay, so, cool. Diane, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us why people actually want to hear what you have to say about this stuff. The, my field of expertise is really about how you can turn on the greatest healing elements within yourself to be your best self, to show up for yourself in your life, and to connect yourself to yourself first and then to others. And we do that by mindset, yoga, nutrition, eating healthy, but not just adding more things, but also removing some of the things that are making us fat, sick, and nearly dead today. And I became so passionate about that because I myself was in and out of the hospital and no one knew it was wrong with me and told me I was fine. And then I went on this path and I got four certifications and um, different certifications, nutrition, wellness, and yoga. And I bridged all of them together because there's all these, you know, there's a lot of people who are specialists today in things, but no, none of these things exist in a vacuum. Like mm. your hormones don't not affect your digestion. Right. And you know, you could be a right. hormone expert, but how do they all like play as a team? And literally when I was a pro, I was a pro soccer player when I was 21 and there's 11 players on the field, right? Well, there's 11 systems in the human body. And oh. we all gotta, you know, they all gotta play together. Work as a together. Team. Yeah. yeah. So you can't just have one person like running like crazy and running with the ball and not passing it. And that's what happens when you're a specialist. All right. Love and, it. And, well, you know, coming from a sports background myself, I I absolutely love the idea of having all different parts of the body, the different senses, the different feelings, the everything that goes on, all the different processes that happen within the body working in coordination with each other. And that's usually, you know, you see it, the best teams are the ones that know how to work well and are like a well-oiled machine. Totally. With human beings, it's the same thing. If, you, if we want to have the best – uh, sexual experience or just life experience in general, it really helps if your body is a well-oiled machine or a well-lubed machine, mm -hmm. I guess. Lube with coconut oil. <laughs> so you're here to talk to us today about specifically the systems involving sex. Yes, and, and multiple systems there are, yes. Okay, awesome. All right, and you brought a guest with you, uh, I see here. 
Uh, and this is a uh, well. So this, this is, is a, Kobe Bryant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 brought the L.A. Kings hockey team with her. Apparently, no. Uh, actually, she brought a guest with her to talk about. You know, uh, and of course, this is going to be another one of our guests who is going to remain anonymous. Uh, here, why don't you introduce our guest? Because I, I we're giving sure. her a nickname and not an initial today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So so her name is Satana, and she is. Um, I, I brought her on today because I could have brought anybody on, but I brought her on today because number one, she's fucking gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. And she's an amazing. And I think that a lot of women today, we get pigeonholed. You know, some another woman sees that another one's beautiful and we assume that they have everything going for them. And I've been working with this client for, um, you know, short time now. But she and I just clicked and she has a lot of digestive issues going on, a lot of health issues going on and a lot of sex issues going on because of it. And so she's mm. got a really back, good backstory. She also has some psychological fun that the girls will be able to um, add to. And so I think this is a great way that she can heal through the collective 11 system to the body, including the mind, body, and spirit. So welcome, Satna. Thank you. I can't wait to learn from each of you. Satna. I love that. Yeah. Oh, so sexy. Yeah, it's so sounds so ethnic. Much, so. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so ethnic, but she's tall, blonde, and gorgeous. So not ethnic in Jessica way. I don't know. I'm brown for those of you who don't know. So, yes. <laughs> so she's very ethnic today on the show. So tell us, Satna, about the work you guys are doing together, you and Diane. Uh, I came to Diane because I wanted to have a more complete picture of my health. Even though on the outside, many people may look at me and say, wow, she looks like she's healthy or she looks like she's in, in uh, good shape. But I just knew that something wasn't uh, working right on the inside. Hmm. Uh, it, like physiologically? All of my systems, even though I was doing eating right, exercising, all the categorical things we're told to do, I just knew that something was missing. I, I wasn't feeling great. Hmm. Uh, and so I approached uh, Diane so that she could help me identify those things uh, and micromanage those because so many of us uh, have so many things happening internally, but we only see mm -hmm. what's external. Yeah. And yeah. until we commit to diving into uh, the process of figuring out, you know, how is A affecting B and B affecting C? And I needed help with that because I'm just your average girl next door. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's not my talent. Uh, uh, yeah. Nothing and it's one of those. average there. I'm sorry. No, You're right. gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And it's one of those things we just don't know how we're supposed to be feeling. So we assume yeah. that this is normal. I, okay, I feel like shit, but this is normal, right? And then you work with Diane, and I can imagine how differently you feel since working with her. Yeah, what's most exciting is having a direction to head. Uh, no, the actual things that I can work on mm -hmm. that will actually influence uh, me feeling better instead of me just saying, well, I'm tired today and I don't know why. Well, yeah. you know, now maybe I know why I have too many levels of something or you know, and, and having that actual information is powerful because so many of us just go through life, me, uh, saying or making up why we think we feel the way we feel. Yeah. And, and that's a poor way to go about managing our health. And, you know, all we have is our health. It affects everything. Well, yeah. so one thing you said, um, Satna, is that I just I had a feeling that something was wrong. So could mm -hmm. you it's just so broad. I, I'm thinking of yeah. so many things. So what yeah. specifically came up where you were mm -hmm. like, OK, I need to speak to some professional. Okay, th This is easy. <laughs> very specifically, it's very vain. I felt like I should have abs. My goodness, I've been working. <laughs> oh. I've been working on those abs for years. Yeah. Uh, and serious, taking so many different paths and, you know, listening to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so funny hearing people say, oh, it's the last thing to come in. And uh, abs are made in the kitchen. And uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> What's the recipe? I, yeah, I was going to say, I need to the know. Recipe is, is me. Oh, and nice. Recipe is Diane in the I, kitchen. And sex. Lots uh, of sex. Well, well then, <laughs> I need to give you my number. <laughs> so vainly, I was in search of these abs, which is quite funny because I'm not the person that's, oh, okay, I'm in search of abs, but I'm over here eating a cheeseburger. That's yeah. not yeah. me. I'm the right. one putting in the work mm -hmm. um, and uh, learning and researching and doing everything that they say out there I'm supposed to be doing, but yet I still did not have the abs. So it started out very vainly mm. uh, because I felt like the rest of my body was exactly where I thought it should be, uh, but the abs were not. And then 
my energy was just a little bit off. Like I'm one of those people that I shoot off like a rocket in the morning and then I die at night. Oof. Uh, that sounds and, amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, but I knew I was pulling myself through the day. Oh. It wasn't that I was having the energy through food and exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pulling myself through the day. Yeah. And so I knew that there was something going on there that I wasn't uh, receiving the benefits of all of the nutrition I was intaking. Hmm. And I wasn't seeing that in terms of, like I said, vaguely abs. in terms of the abs. In terms of which, abs. Come on. Who doesn't want abs? I would like abs. <laughs> I, 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 I've Dr. got Kaser, abs. Where can we buy abs? You guys need uh, oh, Amazon <laughs> Prime. <laughs> come to my yoga lattes class. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I like the Amazon Prime idea. That'd be a great thing. Now, you were talking about, you know, that this was kind of a vain pursuit for you. Now, was there a feeling of with that when you didn't have the abs, when you weren't, you know, trying to work yourself into the best shape possible? Did you feel like it had the impact uh, uh, negatively on your sex life? Yeah, I, we just want to talk about sex. Yes, yeah, sex. <laughs> yes. More, please. Uh, I <laughs> I think that's a great question because um, while my husband loves every part of my body how it is uh, today, yesterday, and tomorrow, he's mm -hmm. very committed to me no matter how I look, uh, which is super, but I have to be pleased with how I look. Mm. Yeah. And for me, be a part of being sexy is having a nice figure and having a soft midsection for me is a bit uncomfortable. I don't like to be touched mm. or caressed on um on your what abdomen I feel yeah, yeah on really? my abdomen be so mm -hmm. okay. because i'm i'm sensitive to that so it does affect uh sex to some degree i guess you would say because that's an area that's off limits for me okay mm. well what i'm wondering you didn't even say that you had a bad sex life so i'm wondering what your sex life is mm. even like you know for me i'm pretty insecure about um let me see my tits when I'm lying a certain mm -hmm. way, but I, I would never say that I have a bad sex life. So that's what I'm wondering. Where's your sex life now and where does Diane fit in with that? Yeah, the sex life now is pretty average. Uh, what do you mean by average? I, I, I hope I'm pretty <laughs> average. Uh, I, it's a pretty, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And does your husband know it's average? Maybe describe <laughs> it uh, <laughs> specifically. Maybe give us some details about this average well, <laughs> sex life. How about this? What is lacking? Because that's what we do on the show. What yeah. is lacking in the sex life? I, I think the sex has become so um, quick uh, maybe that's the nature of our lifestyle with, you know, young kids in the home. Mm. But it's become more of uh, check it off the list. Uh, uh -huh. You know, let's let's get this done and get on to what's next in the day. Yeah, right. Um, it's nothing like it was in the beginning. And I think both of us would like to get back to that type of uh, burst Passionate, passionate, mm -hmm. fuck on the mm -hmm. kitchen counter. Exactly. Do you Take at least your time. Get to orgasm? Both of you guys, when you have sex, do you like connect? Not very often. Not both of us very often. Not both of you often, really. Right. Okay. Now, did you have that connection at the beginning? Oh yes, did we? Was this before <laughs> kids? Was this when you had kids? Did it drop or? Yes. Okay. Now, how much also, I mean, we, I'm sad that we don't have your husband in here to talk about this, because uh, how much of it is also, because if things are kind of going quick and by schedule and routine at this point, how much of it is on his shoulders as well? Because it, it takes two people. It takes to, two people, exactly. Yeah. And while we are just helping you with how your perspective of sex with your husband is right now, at the same time, how much of this routine kind of feeling is being brought on by him? <clears throat> You know, I'm not sure to answer for him. I would just say that, um, you know, we grab it when we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then even yeah. I think when we do have time, we're like kindergartners at it. It's like, wait a minute, what? How did how did we used to do this? Why, we used to be so good, and now you know what? We need I think a crash that's great. course again yeah. and getting back oh. to you know. How that. do we do this? How did we used to do this? It's interesting. Yeah. But I'm still not hearing how Diane's involved in this. So I'm yes. very curious because we were we started with the nutritional aspect, the diet aspect. So how do these two things fit in for you, Sana? Or Diane? Well, I guess the first question I have is, OK, what is your sex drive like before you came? What is your sex drive like right now? Um, For the most part, I'm just 
not very interested. It just doesn't register on top of the to-do list, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of, I need to do that. And how big of a priority was it before? I didn't even have to think about it. It just happened a lot. <laughs> Why did it happen? Was your what, I mean, <laughs> Why did my, it happen? My, yeah, hmm. like, like my thought in this is that I, I, I'm pretty horny. And I, I, if, if I can't get sex, if like someone's not pursuing me, I'll go pursue it because it's like a daily need for me. And if I'm not getting it from, you know, someone I'm dating or whatever, then I'll get it through my toys because I just it's part of me because I know that I mean, I've done a lot of research on this, too, that an orgasm and sex will it is like 10 times more effective than Valium for anxiety. So like even before I came here this morning, I'm like a little bit nervous. You know, every time mm -hmm. I, I had a radio show, too. So every time I'm doing something where I need to calm down, instead of taking a drug, I will just masturbate or, you know, whatever. So there to me, I see that there is a physiological need um, for a healthy human body to have sex or to orgasm because it's a way of releasing. And so I think of myself like if I ever get married, it needs to be like brushing teeth. It needs to be like a regular thing. So why is it not a regular thing? If you had enough of a sex drive, you'd be jumping his bones all the time, right? So comment on that part. Well, I think um, there's so many factors that go into this. You talked about the 11 systems in the body. I mean, there's so many zillions of things that are going on in both of our lives on a daily basis that I think we haven't prioritized us uh, mm. and sex. And I think we would both very much like to be on the hood of the car again, like when we first met. Um, but, you know, the opportunities for us to be doing that are just not there. Your box of opportunity, you just get used to little more, less, 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 less. Mm. And you uh -huh. start living by that. I, li I just like the fact that you referred to it as a box of opportunity. Uh, <laughs> I want a box of opportunity. You have a box of opportunity. <laughs> plenty of men in Los Angeles. <laughs> so help me understand how nutrition comes in. Yeah. I, I'm hearing a lot of the biological background. Yes. But. Yes. Okay. So this is specifically, and I could list five, and I came prepared to talk to fi talk about five if we even get to five, because there's there are many. But one of the bigger issues that, that we're experiencing today is obviously stress. And mm -hmm. Satna mentioned it already that she has a very, you know, they have a very fast paced life and we're not prioritizing sex and we're prioritizing money or time schedules. We literally, if we're not scheduling in sex and it doesn't happen and today's level of stress, I mean, stress comes from so many different places. It's, it's chemical, it's physiological, it's as Satna mentioned, it's um, body perception. And yeah. when we don't feel sexy, we're not going to want sexy. Yeah. We're not going to want sex. And it's confidence. And it, the more confidence a woman exudes, then the more likely she is to obviously have sex, as you guys talk about, as, mm -hmm. to want sex. And part of feeling confidence is testosterone. And so it's not just a woman thing. What I see more now today on the lab tests that we run on our clients and patients is complete adrenal failure. And what does that mean? So our adrenals are um, two little pea-sized guys that are sitting on top of our kidneys and what they're responsible for, they're the manufacturing plant of our hormones. And I'm not just talking, about, you know, and there it is. Hormones are the secrets to hormoning, hormone. How do you mm. make your hormone? Oh, so I uh, like that. Ah. <laughs> New tagline. New tagline. <laughs> I love that. How do you make your hormone? Ha ha. <laughs> you ramp up the adrenals, right? And the adrenals are just getting knocked like crazy. It's like, it's like our adrenals make sex hormones, they make sleep hormones, and they make stress hormones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all three of those S hormones if our adrenals are getting knocked, then they're not, they're like, ain't nobody got time to make all these hormones. I am stressed yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is constantly pumping out uh, cortisol is our stress hormone. And our body's like, oh, stress, stress, stress. And it keeps pumping out cortisol. And check this out. This is what's going on today. If you hear nothing else today from me, this is what you're going to hear. The more stress we have in our life, the more cortisol that our, our adrenals needs to release to cope with that stress. And then guess what? Your body is not making sex hormones okay oh. okay so uh also I've, i heard something about cortisol being one of the hormones that uh leads to people storing fat you got instead it. of burning it you got it sam okay so check this out too so cortisol is so if you if you go back to i, I talked a, a little bit earlier about um you know we have to talk about primal needs like where did how did we evolve and right now we're being asked to take in an, an, as the same amount of information one day as we we did 50 years back, like 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's stress, right? Processing all of this information is stress. So we have to figure out how to turn this off or turn it down or just deal with it differently. So 
Cortisol is the hormone that's released when we're being, let's say, we we experience danger and our body goes, oh, and it will release cortisol to run from that experience. Like maybe a tiger chasing after you or something right. primally if you think is about that. Is this the fight, flight, fight or, or flight. flee? You got it, girl. Or fight or flee. <laughs> I heard freeze. Freeze hormone. Freeze, fight or flight. Correct. So like it's, a possum. It, so you decide what to do. Your body's like, just okay. get the hell out of the situation. Whatever right. it is, just get the hell out of it. So our body is in this get the hell out of the situation all day long. Mm. And then when we have chronic inflammation, like as in in the gut, so this is what I say. Another tagline is if if you're if you're in your sex life and if your sex life is in a rut, then address the gut. Oh, write because, that down, everyone. I yeah, dig it. For sure. I dig it. I like that. I like because that. if your gut's inflamed, which is pretty much the majority of Americans today, then you have a lot of toxins in the liver, a lot of toxins in the body, and little text messages from the hormones can't send up to the brain to say I'm horny. Mm-hmm. So it, and it starts with the adrenals where we're not even releasing enough sex hormones so that it can text message the brain. So even if we are releasing enough hormones, and I do see this with a lot of females, they have good testosterone. Satna has great testosterone. Yeah, mm-hmm. She just has a lot of digestive inflammation oh. that is disrupting her six pack, you know, being revealed to the world. Right. And because it's there, are, I'm sure it's there. It's totally <laughs> it's there, waiting dude. to come out. But however, she does have high progesterone, and and when when it, it's not just about one hormone being high or one hormone being low. So it's not just like oh, take more testosterone. Right. Um, it's about having them in balance. So she's got great testosterone levels. Mm-hmm. We did this with a, with a saliva test, not a blood test. We want to know what's free and available. Like what's single, not married. Mm-hmm. Blood tests are, are married, and you you married hormones, and that doesn't tell us anything. We want to know what's available for use. And her testosterone levels were great. Her progesterone levels were high. And progesterone levels will drop your sex drive. And so, Really? Yeah. So we need to that's make sure they're level. And so too will estrogen. Estrogen dominance will drop your sex drive. And that's like 90% of women today. You know what? I have um I have another colleague in the field. He's a dating coach for men as well. And he um anytime he has a client come in with, my sex drive is really low, he has them go and get their hormone levels tested. Right. And awesome. a lot of them are so opposed to it. Why? I don't know. Because they're young guys. Oh, they're usually I'm in their fine. Yeah, they're like mm-hmm. in their um maybe twenties to thirties and they're like, Why would I get my testosterone? Checked? I've seen that with my clients too. It's interesting. And like mm-hmm. I've brought this up to guys every time they're like, Oh, you know, I, I don't know what my what's my sex drive maybe I'm not into her a lot of the guys will be like oh I might not be into her and then the relationship goes into this weird frenzy but it's something as simple as listen your body you know your body chemistry is very real in regards to your sex drive and your arousal there's something else with what you just said Mm -hmm. there this this one is amazing primally Mm -hmm. um and one of the other things when women say I don't have a sex drive even when I'm on that 10 day period First, I'm like, well, your adrenals are probably shot, like most women. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Even their cortisol, if they have stress, then their, their sex hormones are they're getting produced. They're just not getting produced in the right levels. And so then I'm then I go, well, okay. Then there's this, this other component. The amount of women on birth control today, yes, yes, oh. is insane. And you guys, can, if you follow me, if you go to dietingcaser.com, or I, I'm really, um, I've got a lot of videos on YouTube that I talk about this because I've had my own struggle since 17. I was on birth control. I've tried every birth control out there, including the copper IUD, and then I got estrogen dominance and, and a lot of toxicity in the body from it. And when we take birth control, it synthetically alters our hormones, and that synthetically alters our sex drive. And that also synthetically alters our desire for a mate, our mm. compatibility for a mate mm. through our olfactory glands and our nose. You the know pheromones, what? right? It changes it's, the pheromones. And here's the thing, Kat. Here's the thing, Kat. If we are being chemically altered, then our body's ability to sense through our pheromones mm-hmm. a mate that is that is compatible for us, that we can have healthy babies with genetically, we can't sense it. it it's blunted. This happened to me when I dated somebody I met online mm-hmm. <laughs> and we dated for three months. Then I got off birth control. And he smelled like shit. I yes. hear I was that like, a lot. This horrible. Get away from me! And I tried for three years, and I was like, "What's wrong with me?" Oh no! I've seen this. Yes. I've read a study You've about this. You've seen a cat in your yes. practice? Uh huh. It's there is a there is a study. Yes, I read it when I was. It either. was mainly with married couples though, because Correct. once they got married, they came off of the birth Correct. control. Right. And then for some they're reason, like, why does like, my husband smell like yes. shit? I don't. I want to be around him. Yes. And yeah. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, you smell so bad. What have you let's been talk, eating? Let's right. look at that. I've been feeding you the same thing. That's so interesting you say that because I usually, yeah, when I get into these longer relationships, I get off 
do I get off or on? Regardless, well, I do get I off. Hope you're but, getting on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always have a change in my in my birth control. But I always notice the smell. It's the first thing I notice is mm-hmm. the smell is different. It's no. so yeah. weird for the people. And it sounds like you went through a lot of those changes when you got off of the uh, birth control. Now, for people who stay on birth control, is there a natural way to combat those changes, mm-hmm. those synthetic changes? Ooh, that's a great question, Sam. And that's tough. It's it's such a debate. So. I have a lot of clients I'll work with and they're like, but I can't get off the pill. I don't want to get pregnant. And I'm like, yeah. well, there are other alternatives. And I myself have not been on birth control for three years and I've not been for pregnant. this for this reason, for this very reason. I mean, I, I'm like supercharged superwoman. I could do anything now. And I am like I turned into who I'm supposed to be like mm. I'm no I'm no longer synthetic anything. So mm-hmm. awesome. that's the first thing is that. We have so many chemicals, you know, 85,000 chemicals plus have been approved for use in our food supply, in our environment, only 250 of which have been approved for safety. So we are literally inhaling these things and eating these things and, and, and rubbing them all over our body like parabens and things that disrupt our estrogen and our testosterone. They're yeah. things that, that literally will intercept hormone communication in the body and production. And so I just want, I'm going to go clean as possible. And that's why I started my cleanse, the warrior cleanse, so that people can learn more about how to get these toxins out of their life, not just toxic things, but toxic people, um, because you're the average sum of the top five people you surround yourself by. But what happened, Sam, is I evolved into this clean, as clean as possible today person, and my orgasms and my sex drive and my sex life and my connection with other people went through the roof. And I went, I want everybody to feel this way. And I see a lot of women who the same thing happens. They're like, I don't want to get off the pill. And I'm like, well, okay, then you have a choice. You can take something called DIM. Mm -hmm. And that DIM is something that is um, abundant in leafy greens and green vegetables, broccoli and cruciferous vegetables. That does help to flush the the estrogen, the synthetic estrogen from your body, from the liver. And then your sex drive should naturally start to increase. Okay. But for people who don't want to, you know, because that's we're still taking synthetic stuff. So over time, it destroys and depletes your vitamins. So Satna had had taken um, birth control pills for about 25 years. Wow. And when I ran her report for all the nutrient deficiencies deficiencies she had, she is very very deplete in B vitamins. Okay. And B vitamins produce energy in the body, and you can't have sex if you don't have energy. And long-term oral contraceptive use will do that to the body. So she had a ton of deficiencies. So during, yes, there are certain things that you can do to flush the liver. I love coffee enemas for that, for sure. All right. So you've been telling us about these these first. So you told me that there was five components. Right. What else are we looking at? Okay. So there's there, I, I made an acronym, and it's F yes. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> two yes, two s's. Nice. Okay. So recap what we went over already. So okay. So real quick, I'll, I'll, I'll go through them really quick. And if you guys follow me, I'm going to be writing an article for Collective Evolution on this very topic, so you guys can get with me. There's going to be a series of three things we talk about. But food is the biggest thing. You know, food becomes our mood. Mm-hmm. And if you're giving your body input of gluten and dairy and a bunch of artificial things, then it will for men convert testosterone to estrogen and for women convert estrogen oh. to testosterone you get pcos and mm-hmm. men get like excess fat and things like that interesting. so interesting very interesting so food literally does become your mood okay. and the next one is f and then y so yoga oh. Yay. Oh, okay. yoga and rest and meditation so mindfulness connection to yourself and um right also- at my alley yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, both Kat and I, you can come take our class. But yoga is um, very powerful, and they're saying that it's equally as beneficial as medications like uh, antidepressants. And, and I'm not saying get off yours, but I'm just saying it does help. And couples who yoga together will sex together amazingly. Um, and then the other one is enemas. Oh, wait, exercise. That's the E. Oh, wait, how can about it exercise also and be enemas? En- it could be F yeast. It sounds like yeast. I know, it does. <laughs> but yeah, exercise for sure. Everybody knows we're not moving enough. Um, exercise increases a lot of, uh, releases a lot of endorphins and things that connect. And then also, one out of four women um, orgasm when they exercise. Yes, I've had clients, Big I've time. had students come to me and say, I just orgasmed when we were doing the ab crunches. And I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's normal. And they were just so insane they were like i was right next to this guy and i didn't know what to do and i was like <laughs> girl totally just true. let it go <laughs> the pheromones around the room yeah absolutely but it's, it's true and, and i orgasm when i'm doing like the captain's crunch lifts and stuff yeah. and and i'm like i hope nobody can smell this but um, <laughs> but yeah but it, it helps with your pelvic floor muscles so you can have better orgasms okay and so this so is the exercise time. exercise okay. yep and then of course you've got the other s's which a big 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 one is sleep 
sleep. You know, yeah. Sam, Absolutely. Dude, for Absolutely. men, and they've done studies on this too, if you get less than like six hours, six and a half hours of sleep a night, you lose like 15% of your testosterone. Yeah. Really? And then if it's like, if it goes on for like six weeks, you lose 15 years of testosterone. Oh my God. It's huge. We're not getting enough sleep. We can't have sex or have a drive without rest mm -hmm. now this was something that i've uh, i'm personally going through you know with the jobs that i have I, I tend to be indoors most of the time so the one vitamin i'm truly deficient of is vitamin d and oh. so i've actually been given a prescription for vitamin d really? so that i can recover a lot of those uh to get myself back up to the right level That's now, out in the sunshine dear now oh, no, hold on a minute wow. Now, I've, I I've personally, I'll, my sex drive has always been sky high, and it hasn't been impacted yet, but this is something that I am concerned about going forward in life. Mm, now, yes. is there anything that a vitamin deficiency like in vitamin D can yes. have on your sex drive? Vitamin Duke? That's what I thought you were talking about. I was it, like, you don't need D. Yeah, no. Okay. I got plenty, darling. I know. <laughs> <laughs> vitamin D is, yes, Kat, you're so right. And it's it's true. You think logically go out in the sun and get more vitamin D. And D is critical for hormone production. Mm -hmm. And so is cholesterol and so is fat. But we're told to eat fewer of those things. And vitamin D is important. But if you get in the sun a lot, and I, I have a lot of people I work with who are like, yeah, I'm in the sun all the time, but I'm still low in D. Yeah. And they're like, they should be like between 60 to 80 and they're like 30 and they're still taking in a D supplement, maybe like 5,000 and they're still not even getting where they want to be with their levels. Hmm. D will trump a sex drive quick. D is like a buzz kill to the heart on. Low D or low high D? D? Okay, yeah. low D. So I'm yeah. definitely going to need to start taking, like the prescription I have is a once a week pill. Prescription. That's Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's here's, the, here's the thing. D, if you're in the sun all the time and if you're taking this D, that's a long-term Band-Aid. The solution is you also need to make sure that your gut microbiome, and this is nerdy, have enough of a releasing of certain vitamins to actually to synthesize D. Okay. Mm. So it's, that's, that's why I said he, if you're in a sex rut, heal your gut. So the right kind of spore-based probiotics. Huh. Outstanding. Everybody should take a probiotic forever. You might not even need a D anymore. Interesting. That's actually, and do enemas. Yeah. I definitely know for sure, you know, if you have a stomach ache, if your stomach's bugging, if you're, if you're eating stuff you're not supposed to be eating, then not just is it going to have a long-term effect on your sex drive, but immediately on the spot. If you have a totally. stomach ache, you don't want to have sex at that moment. Yeah, you're more concerned right. about, you know, am you I going to... You fart during sex. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's what I think about. Like, yeah. I know. So, I mean, there's no... going to happen. There's no bigger boner killer for a guy than to know that he might blast ass when ah. he comes. <laughs> oh, God. Blast unless, off. unless the girl is really into to that then it might be something Ew. that spurs things on there has been more than one occasion i hate to say where like after a guy has come he's like farted he'd be like oh my god i was holding that in so hard yeah, like, oh, <laughs> it's god. Too. yeah exactly but and that, i have that fear as well that ties into the next s though too Ooh. so good job sam thank you another good s. S. S, uh, s, 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 s s for sam. segue s for super segue <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sound segway. like sesame street <laughs> oh okay last s so this is a trip because vitamin d is one of them so of course zinc is another one that can interfere the 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 transition of converting testosterone to estrogen which we have a lot of men doing so the more fat you have the more estrogen you're releasing the lower your sex drive mm. and that's mm. important to understand too because a lot the more fat we have the more estrogen we're releasing so you're talking about your ex-girlfriend <laughs> who is now fat well her sex drive is probably shot and she might be doing the fake it i don't know mm -hmm. i can't speak to i was her, gonna say but... maybe we're onto something with sam's theory then no, i know i hope way. she's listening I hope she's listening. Yeah, I hope so too. Girl, we're helping you. Yeah, we're, you, know, you need it. Girl. You know, I feel like I owe her at least to give her some good advice. After, you know, oh, it's called the karma kick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so it's last true. S, we're in suspense. So, okay, well, I, I need to make sure you guys know that the the first ones, like the zinc and the okay. D and the, and the B is important. B is for energy. Mm -hmm. um, you need vitamin C for your immune system and to have energy also. So I can mm -hmm. go deep into all these things, but I'll go deeper into, into a different time. So just follow me and I'll talk more about it. But this is a freaking awesome new thing. Hot off the press. So have you heard of pine nuts? But have you heard of pine pollen? Never, pine right? pollen. Never in my life. Mm. No, I, I've, you know, I've heard, you know, a lot of times people uh, take, take bee pollen for mm -hmm. uh, mm. different, uh, just for different medical benefits and mm -hmm. different, you know, health benefits. What's, uh, what's pine pollen? <laughs> All right. So I just thought of the reason why maybe it's so magical. So if you look at trees, they are... They erect, right? These trees are just standing right up. Oh, they're Very so phallic. hard. So yeah. hard. They're, they're so, so hard and erect. And if you eat the pollen from the pine tree, then your testosterone levels will naturally boost and Get balance out. the other hormones with it. Hmm. And people have done lots of studies on this now. So it's a, 
lots of Tr- research on pine it. Pollen. Pine pollen instead of Viagra, instead of Cialis, instead Get of all this artificial stuff. I love that. Yeah. More wow. than those things. Yeah. Where can we find this? <laughs> Do I have to local... go to a tree, knock on the door, and say, "Hey, yeah. you know, find your local pine your forest." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I want what you're having. You know. <laughs> God. Where do I go to find this? Well, there's a lot of sources. I'm sure people are going to go into Amazon, but there's there's a lot of different things out there. There's pills. There's so don't capsules. go licking trees outside yeah. in the backyard. Hug a tree. That'll help. Hug a tree. Um, there you go. Of course, it always helps, like, as Cat would say with her unicorn pants. I was going to say, I already do this. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought, Dr. Cat. Wait, Dr. Cat does that. part of the yogic path. But no, um, I actually sell some on my store. So if you guys want to go to my website, you can see some of it. Um, and there's you guys just find some things that are serum, not in pill form. Serum mm-hmm. is more bioavailable. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like a tincture, yeah. it's going to be more bioavailable. It doesn't have to go through the inflamed stomach, yeah. which we're a lot, you know, digestive inflammation today is a big cause for, um, it's a big killer for hard-ons. And, Wait, uh, so I'm sorry. I, 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 I just want to find out what the website is to where we can get this because oh, yeah. uh, you're selling that product and a few more products I take. Yeah. Right. Uh, where can they find your website? DianeKazer.com. There you go. Okay. And of course, the, well, the Warrior Cleanse is what I just launched to, the WarriorCleanse.com. There's no store on there that's going to take you there, but both of those things will get you to me anyway. Well, so you said it's better or it works as efficiently as Viagra Cialis. Would you yeah, say for girl. women as well? It's a good question. So for women, you don't want to really – we're so hormonally sensitive. We're mm-hmm. so hormonally sensitive, and mm-hmm. that's why – that's why you shouldn't be putting tampons and crazy things and, you know, KY, these chemicals up your beautiful lady garden because, you know, you're getting yeast infections and urinary tract infections. And you don't want to have sex because it's very painful and PCOS oh God, yeah. because you've got these cysts that are growing down there. Oh, stop so it. you got to take care of your lady garden, too. So you, if you're taking those things, it could disrupt our hormones. Mm-hmm. And you may not. I mean, <laughs> you can try it, but it might be too much for a woman. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. For so one, this is for the men, this, yeah. the pine for, licking trees, yeah. hugging pine pollen, them. gentlemen, pine just pollen. for you guys, <laughs> exclusively for, for you. And for women, I would say definitely the dim would help to flush the estrogen. That's the synthetic estrogen, and mm-hmm. then adaptogens, adaptogenic herbs that help to support the natural production and balancing of the adrenals, so that you're making stress, sleep, and sex hormones, and this and, and balance. And 95% of our fat burning happens at night. So huh. if a woman's overweight, she's not going to be confident and then they're not going to get laid. Wait, so what was the final S? Supplementation. Supplement. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. Yeah. So I want to so, tie it back to Satna, actually, because now this has, got my, um, this has got my brain going. So we had, I want abs. Now we have low sex drive. So how does all of that tie together? I- I'm assuming you guys found this out. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's okay. where I'm at. So the find, you know, as far as like what what came up in her labs, that was mm-hmm. like the whoa, no wonder why I'm not. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So we already talked about she had high progesterone, mm-hmm. and um, high progesterone is going to trump a woman's sex drive. High um, high estrogen is going to trump a woman's sex drive. And Which is funny because those are the lady hormones. Well, they're the lady right? hormones, but testosterone is the sex hormone. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so estrogen dominance is such a major issue today for men and women, but mainly for women, they just don't have a sex drive when they have a lot of estrogen. And estrogen is a growth hormone, so mm. other things in the body like cancer might be growing, and they that might trump their mood to have sex too. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, and they're tired. So for her, for, for Satna, she's – She's high progesterone. She's a very rare situation where I've seen high progesterone and the sex drive is not there, but but she has other hormones that are on board. So, but for for her, so what we're going to do is start balancing those things out uh, by cleaning out her liver, cleaning out her digestive tract, and getting that shit out of the body because you know we're full of shit, and the more mm-hmm. we're full of shit, the less of a sex drive we have because we have more toxins. So, really, for for her, it's to get a lot of the toxins out. Hmm. The, the majority of the women I work with, this just as soon as we start doing coffee enemas, just as soon as we start doing uh, a lot of these nutritional and hormonal balancing, they're like, all of a sudden, my sex drive came back. And it's a love for yourself too, like Kat talks about a lot. And I know that this is a big part of the show. Yeah, it's uh, it sounds like finally somebody, whenever they come to you for that help, it's uh, in a way indirectly improving mindfulness because you're giving yourself a Absolutely. chance to actually focus in totally, and give Sam. yourself that chance to repair yourself even. Yep. Well, one thing I yep. like about this, is which you're bringing to the table, you know, a lot of times we on the show talk about the, the mental aspect, the, um, the spiritual aspect, you know, things like that, but... And I know for me, anytime there's an issue with any of my clients or with myself, the first thought is 
there's something I'm fucked, you know, like I'm <laughs> fucked in the head. It's probably because I have like yeah. poor body image and they get really down on themselves. Yeah. But physiologically yeah. and nutritionally, this is something that can be addressed. Okay. Yes, sweetie. And it's something that's taken for granted so much. I know even it's, with me. It's a trip because for years I was told, oh, you just need to like think better thoughts about yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. But literally our neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, those need to be perfectly in, in sync if we can have a good orgasm or an image of ourselves or just be happy. Yeah. And and if those neurotransmitters are off, it's because the gut's off. Serotonin is produced in the gut, 95% of it. So if our gut's off, our, our, our brain's off, our body image is off, and we can only correct so much by saying you should just feel differently. You can't just feel differently yeah, until you right, literally right. physiologically feel differently right. by being rebalanced. So Diane's talking to us about all these systems that interplay with each other. And what we see a lot is outside of the nutrition is the mental aspect, the mental emotional aspect. So something that I often see with women is this constant dialogue in their head as they're having sex um, that we term spectatoring. Um, that's when we're constantly thinking about how we look or how we're acting. Am I pleasing him? Am I, am I doing this enough? Am I, oh shit, I'm not, uh, orgasming yet. And so I'm, I'm curious or even to-do lists. Yeah. How many of us do to-do lists? I used to put sex on my to-do list. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But then it becomes tedious. You know, we talk about prioritizing. It becomes, you know, just another thing. Yeah. So I'm curious for you, Satna, um, when you're having sex, where is your mind? What kind of talk do you have in your mind? Where is it at? I think much of what you just said is where my mind (laughs) is at. And I hope I'm normal in that regard because I think a lot of women fall into that same category. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's why working with Diana is so critical because that endless loop that I have going on in my head that I'm busy and I don't have time or, you know, we've got 30 seconds to get this done. Come on, let's get finished. Mm -hmm, Um, Maybe all of that is part of it but maybe a big part of it is my progesterone and why i'm not feeling that way Uh, maybe if i was feeling more balanced or if i was more balanced on the inside then i would be more apt to be running through the kitchen half naked you know throw me up on the table honey you know but what's happening now is that i have that loop going on in my head that i'm just tired or it's just not Mm -hmm. that good or we just don't have Mm -hmm. that much time or so you're totally right of not being in the moment Uh, And I think as something that we can work on together, uh, my husband and I is making sure that we take the time. We have the time to slow down uh, and make it more intimate or more perverted or more (laughs) special or whatever it is that we're in the mood for that day. Uh, It just takes the both of us putting everything else on the back burner so that we can explore that again. And I think that's something we're really good at doing when we just meet or we're just starting our sexual Mm -hmm. relationship. Uh, But 15 years later, I think uh, it becomes a little bit swept under the rug and a little bit more difficult to get that going. Because we've got so many things on our mind. And and even she's talking, uh, Diane's talking about the gut and how difficult it is to be mindful of our body, of the physical, you know, what's going on? What is the sensation that's happening when A, we don't feel comfortable in our own skin and B, we've got these to-do lists and these achievements and all these things that we put pressure on ourselves to do, Mm -hmm. even to orgasm, how much we place emphasis on I need to orgasm and we lose that whole process of building up that juicy buildup of this feels good orgasm doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that we are constantly reaching for the goal yeah we talked about that with our last um with our last guest she was like i just need to come and all of us here were like whoa because we had another (laughs) guest who was like i don't have to come yeah Yeah. but but it's just all the dialogue that it's what you tell yourself now how readily do you orgasm satna are you are do you have any problems with orgasm itself or is it something where you know that within sex, you guys can kind of just squeeze in the sex act and bam, just like that, you know you're going to be able to come. Okay, look, I got a confession. Oh, no. <laughs> when I went off birth control, my husband wasn't very happy. But because of all of these hormones and the reasons, the damage, uh, I was in search of a healthier lifestyle for myself. And obviously mm-hmm. that interfered quite greatly with him because that no longer meant that we could just have sex whenever. So there was quite a few months where we did not have sex because 
uh, he was angry with me because I had went off of the birth control. Oh, and wow. um, I can remember, I believe it was Father's Day, I went and bought a huge pack of Costco sized condoms. Woo! Mm-hmm. And I said, really can we at least, can we get back on track? Can, can we start that's off? Great of you, I again. Think. Yeah. But uh, that's a temporary band aid, as Diane would say, because, yeah. um, you know, having sex with a condom is not very fun coming from a female perspective especially when you're married Mm. like you should have that intimacy without the condom in my opinion right but my husband doesn't want a vasectomy so we're dealing a little bit with that Uh, uh, with that battle right there and so when you ask how often do I orgasm not very often because that is just doesn't do it for me well one thing Diane said that really made me think about us was um you know you don't exist in a vacuum none of these systems exist exist in a vacuum your body in sex doesn't exist in a vacuum you obviously have your husband there and that's what we talk about all the time is that Mm -hmm. you know there's so many different things that are always going to be going on Mm -hmm. and i always say um I always say it takes two people to have bad sex. Um, because, <laughs> no, because I have a colleague Truth. who's like, the men have to be the best in bed. They have to. And I'm like, listen, I, I consider myself great in bed, but I have bad sex because sometimes I have a bad connection with somebody. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is. And if you're having average sex, you know, we can't sit here and be like, oh, here's all the stuff we're going to tell you to do for yourself, Satna. Because there's another man on the end of your vagina when it comes to you having sex. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So on our show we always end with a next step. Something one thing that you can do to move towards this goal of your better sex life. And I'm thinking Diane, would you like to give her the next step of what she can do towards that? Oh man. You know, it's it's really today uh reducing stress and just loving your body. Like a greater mindfulness of what's going on. Uh, Satna was talking about these things are, are, am I normal? Um, it's very common to have a low sex drive, but it's not normal. That's Mm -hmm. your body saying there's something wrong down here. So stress is the killer today. It's the cause of, um, pretty much all disease. They say 95%. So if stress comes, yeah. And stress comes in a lot of forms, it's, you know, gut inflammation. So we really got to take care of our gut. And I, by that, I mean colon and coffee enemas. I always mm-hmm. have to say, consult your doctor first. <laughs> you said coffee enemas three times now. I need yeah. to know what this means. Because oh, I drink girl, a lot of coffee. Yeah, and... it's not the same thing. No? Okay. No, mm-hmm. I did you a coffee enema last uh, night. Do, we, do you add cream or sugar to this I... mix? <laughs> <laughs> well, the cream will come after when you have sex. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so coffee enemas. It's not just having a cup of joe. What no, is it? No, girl, no. Um, you walk backwards into the Starbucks drive through <laughs> i love it pretty i actually have a full youtube series on how to do an enema why an enema awesome. um, me laying down doing an enema but they have been around since the egyptian era and we took them away and you know about 30 years ago because then drugs came in and they make a lot of money but they don't make a lot of sense so um, I definitely do look into coffee enemas. I sell those kits too if you guys are interested. But I, I'm not about selling things. I'm about opening your mind and opening your body up to the pathways of sexual connection, to connection to yourself. And that's mm. why I created the Warrior Cleanse because there's so much to talk about and I can't talk I about know, it. Just I know. Like, I just I have so many hour. questions that keep coming up. But you can God. tweet my ass if you want. Yeah, <laughs> this is a lot of great stuff <laughs> for yeah. everybody to take home. Yeah, it just makes me excited to do it more. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah. Wait, nobody still has explained to me what a coffee enema is. Well, go to my website. (laughs) If you go to my website, you'll see what coffee enemas are. Okay, so basically here it is. You brew your coffee. You could brew it like normal. You could brew it on on the stove and you get the coffee grinds out because you don't want coffee grinds up your butt because that makes for a very interesting date. Um, (laughs) uh, Want some coffee? Um, <laughs> Something right, yes, smells like mocha. <laughs> <laughs> want some cream with that? Sorry, I perfect, farted. <laughs> perfect time for Sam to go. Uh, you want some cream with that? Oh, um, oh sugar is also. You got to get sugar out of your life, guys. Sugar, like less than fifty grams a day. Sugar is going to kill your sex drive. That was an awesome step for nutrition. I I just want to plug in there. You know, you've talked about uh, the underlying issues with your you and your husband. Just uh, talking about those. I don't even know. Have you guys talked about those things? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever spoken to a sex therapist before about this? No. You and him together? No. Okay. Well, that's something that we may need to give her our business card. <laughs> yeah. And you and your husband can come in and actually address some of the emotional and mental connection Absolutely. issues that might be happening. Because it sounds like you guys have a good handle, or you at least, Sana, have a good handle of, okay, mm-hmm. now I'm going to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm going to take care of my health. I'm mm-hmm. going to take care of my nutrition. And that's what Diane is for, obviously. And so now. And, and uh, the hardest thing is to be able to get your spouse into speaking with a professional. You came in on your own accord, but this is not something that you can do on your own. Sex is, well, it can be one person, but <laughs> in this case, it's about the connection with you two. And as long as that's that, bl- that barrier is there, you can only get so far. It is not all you. But it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, maybe you've, you've assumed that level of responsibility yeah, for your husband's sex life. Really, I, this is something that he needs to be a part of. It sounds like maybe he needs to jump in on the warrior cleanser or something and, <laughs> and do little things himself to show that level of emotional support for you going through this. Because it sounds like whatever sexual issues exist between you, you're taking the steps to make it better where he's just waiting to see what the results are. And really, he could take a more proactive approach to this as well. Mm, right. There's a lot we can go and dig yeah, into this one. There's, there's so a, much. a mountain of issues that I'm sure we can uh, get into. But honestly, we can, won't be able to get into them unless your husband's here with us. So maybe that might be an idea for one of our episodes. Yeah. We want to bring you back in here potentially with your maybe. husband to see what we can do to help spice things up. A with follow you up. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, an F you to the husband. An oh, F-U. Lord. Aww. So Aww. if you want to join us on the couch, you can hit us up. What's the Twitter address, Dr. Cat? Play at Playboy the Couch. Yeah, you can also hit us up on Instagram and all that stuff. Uh, also, if you want to join in and you know have a part of the conversation on the show, the number is eight triple five Playboy eight triple five Playboy. Thank you so much for joining us, Diane. Also, uh, Satna, we really appreciate you opening up and talking about all this. Oh stuff. yeah, as always. Today, and again, your website, Diane. I just oh yeah yeah everybody. yeah. It's a uh, it's just my name, DianeKazer.com, and it's spelled D I A N E K A Z E R. Dot com. It's uh, pretty easy to find me. So if you guys want to read any about the enema stuff or the hormones or female health or literally cutting sugar out of your life and how to to get a better sex life, then it's all in there. It's all self-love. It's food. It's yoga. It's not just one thing. It's mm. 11 things, right, Jess? 11 things, not 11 seven. 11 things. That's a why soccer I'm team. Called- yeah, yeah, it's a soccer, <laughs> it's team. A soccer that's, team. That's why I'm a functional medicine specialist, not a specialist. Love yeah. it, love it. Well, thank you all for joining us. And also, you know, we're, we're going to be back here next week. We're going to have another anonymous guest with us. Same place, same time, new problem right here. Thank you so much for joining us on the couch. PlayboyRadio.com.